Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here with some brand new projects for Halloween. I've got five projects and first of all we've got this carved jack-o-lantern bag. The face is nice and dimensional and I used a fun little action wobble on the leaf, which you can do or not. But it looks really cool with a light inside, just some battery powered lights of any sort or with some goodies inside. However you want to do that, it could be a gift for someone and they could use it for decor or you could use it for decor. Either way, really festive and fun, so there's that. I didn't even turn on my lights. Here's how they look when they're on. These are just some lights that I got from Amazon over a year ago. They look like this. They're, you know, they're fun, they're colorful, but you could also just use a string of um, like LED lights, fairy lights, anything like that would also be awesome. So I've got a nice simple little box here which uses your cutting machine's capability to cut out this cobweb design. But it's also nice and simple and straightforward to put together and you can use some cool patterned papers like I've used here. The patterned paper that I used this time was from Cartabella and it's designed by Stephen Duncan who's one of my favorite paper designers of all time. He's amazing. I love the vintage look that the paper has. It's nice and um, textured and kind of thick, so when you're working with it, it's just, it's a pleasure to work with. So I also came up with this cool box card that's a haunted house. I think you're going to have fun putting it together, and whoever you give it to is going to have fun receiving it and displaying it as a cool piece of decor, too. I've also got a cute little goodie, goodie container, a little candy corn. Lots of fun, pretty simple to put together. If you wanted to make more than one, it wouldn't take you very long. And then finally, I have the Halloween countdown calendar, which is, I'm just really excited about it. I think it would be such a treat to make and give to someone. And you can have a lot of fun putting some goodies inside. And if you've ever made one of my Christmas advent calendars, then you're familiar with the, the concept. And I'm, I'm really happy with the way that this is even simpler than those projects were. Um, each little cup, little slot for goodies is just one piece that you put together the same way and then they all just kind of drop into this frame and then you put the top on. So you'll see here in just a minute, but if you are going to be making that, hopefully you're pleasantly surprised with how easy, easy it is really to put together. So. I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how each project goes together, so let's get started. First for the carved jack-o'-lantern bag, I have my pieces laid out here. These pieces are the, uh, the two eyes, the nose, and two parts that make up the mouth. So those create the dimensional carved looking part of the face. So we've got the stem and the leaf. and the Jack Lantern face itself, as well as some panels. I've got my two side panels, and I went ahead and rubbed a dark brown ink pad around the edges of this. This is a Cat's Eye ink pad by Colorbox. I just thought that was a nice touch. I did the same thing on the back panel, which looks like this. And then the bag itself is made up of this front piece, which is actually patterned paper. It's got a fold line along the bottom, which I will go ahead and fold over, like so. And I also rubbed a dark, dark brown ink pad around the edges of this shape. So again, that's the bag front, and this jack lantern face will be going right on the front like this. It'll be lined up. You'll see. And then we have the, the two sides, which I went ahead and folded. There's folds here and folds here. And then the back of the bag, which has folds on the sides as well as along the bottom. Just like this. And then we've got the bottom, which is made up of two identical rectangles. For this piece, if you'd like, you can rub a light colored ink pad around the edges of it. Again, I've got these cat's eye ink pads by Colorbox. And I'm gonna 
rub this white one around the edge and then I've got a tan one that's called Dune. I'm going to use that to kind of blend it in a little bit. Just adds a nice little ghostly distressed effect and it's okay if it's messy. Just like so. I am also going to just get a little bit around the edges of the cutout pieces. And again, messy is okay. It feels a little weird just being all crazy with your ink, but since it's Halloween, a Halloween project, I feel like being crazy is okay. But it's up to you how you want to do it. You can leave that off altogether, and that's fine too. Next, let's go ahead and fold these. I'm just going to crease every fold line, and then we'll worry later about which direction we want each one going, because some of them are going to be folded in the opposite direction. But first, we're just going get, to get these pieces started by gently folding them along each score line. So the two long pieces are for the mouth. We'll do that last. This little guy is the nose, and these are the two eyes. So here's the nose piece, and I'm going to bend it like this. And as you can see, I'm putting the tab on the back side, and we want it to end up like this. It doesn't matter which way it's going, all three sides are the same. So I'll put a dot of glue here. And then I'm going to glue that right inside the front of the bag. just like this. Next for the eyes, they're also identical so it doesn't matter which which one you glue into which socket, eye socket, <laughs> but this, this part is going to be what's showing. And I'll be folding these 
the opposite way, just like this. Well, just like this. So again, I want this tab to not show on my finished project, so I want to glue it behind, just like this. So I want it to be just like that. And then I'll glue it right inside the eye socket like that. And then do the same exact thing for the other eye. So you want to make sure everything's lining up nicely, especially that interior pointy part right here. Make sure that it's nice and snug. Give it time to dry as you press it down. And it's going to look just like that. So go ahead and repeat that for the other eye. So next I've got my two mouth pieces. They look like this and this. So again, I'm gonna glue either one of the side tabs, doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to glue it behind just like this. And then the other one, same thing. So next, I want you to find this part right here. It's got two triangular tabs. If you take a look, there's nothing else like it here. That's this right here. That's gonna be at the top of our Jack Lantern's mouth. So if we place it up here, you can kind of see it starting to take shape like this. This is the mouth, just like this. So with this, with this part up at the top, that's gonna go inside right here. So this is going to fit inside the mouth hole just right. And you can use that to see where you need to fold your pieces in the opposite direction so that everything fits together properly. So it's going to be going like this. Let's start by anchoring some pieces and then we'll just work our way around the mouth gluing it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and crease the outside a little bit harder so it's easier to work with. I didn't really crease it very sharply the first time. And then I'm going to be putting it right inside the mouth. So I'm going to anchor these two sides, these two tabs, I'm going to anchor them. just like this. And you want everything to be a nice snug fit lined up as perfectly as possible. And then I'm gonna anchor these two tabs on the other side.
just like this. Next, if you need to fold anything the other way to make it fit in the right direction, you can just kind of get it started. So it's basically going to be going in just like this. So let's go ahead and anchor some other large tabs, such as this one. It's easy to see where that goes, as well as this one. So you're just going to work your way around, gluing those down in whatever order is easiest for you. And it should fit together just right, like a puzzle. So once you've got some of the large tabs anchored down, it's going to be easy for the rest of it to kind of fall into place. So just glue down your remaining tabs. Next we can take our jack-o'-lantern face and I'm going to go ahead and glue the stem on and it intentionally doesn't quite line up with the stem. I wanted it to have a little bit of a shadow effect. So go ahead and glue that on, really just anywhere, maybe like this. And then we can glue this whole face right onto the front of our bag, carefully lining it up as perfectly as possible so we just get that cool carved effect like a real jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to put a line of glue very close to the edge around the whole mouth and the eyes and the nose as well as around the edge except for the stem. 
just like this and then very carefully line it up and once you have it positioned nicely you can lay it on the other side and press down around those edges from the other side If you've got a bone folder or a flat edge handy, it might be nice to use that kind of as a brayer almost, or even a pencil could do. And take a look if you've got any glue oozing out the sides, you can clean that up a little bit, but there's the super cool front of your bag. I hope yours is as exciting and festive as mine is. So next I'm gonna take my two sides and you want the tabs to be on these sides, just like this. And I'm going to take my side panels and position them like this and this. And then we can move this out of the way for now. So this is the way you want to glue your side panels on. So go ahead and do that. Then we can take the back of our bag and the back panel and glue that on nice and centered. So now let's put our bag together. I'm gonna to glue the two sides to the front and then glue the back on, and then glue the bottom on. Pretty easy. So you'll just wanna line this up as best you can. Corner to corner, edge to edge. and then press it flat. Same with the other side.
And then I'll use these tabs on the back of the bag to glue the sides to it. And then I'll close it up using this final tab. I'm just pressing down from the inside along that tab there. Just like that. And now we can put our bottom on. So I've folded these in. I'm going to set it upright. I might just crease them a little more sharply. And then set it set it upright and take one of your two bottom pieces, which are these two identical rectangles. I'll just take one of them and put a line of glue around its edge. And you might get some glue on your work surface, so you maybe do this on top of some scrap paper, unless you don't mind getting glue on your tabletop. And then just put that down inside, being careful with your the, the front, with those face pieces. So I'm just pressing down from the inside around that edge. like that. So now you can glue your bottom on. And if, if you would like to set set your bag upside down on the edge of your table so that the edge so that the stem is hanging over the edge of your table, you can set it down nice and flat while you glue the bottom on. I'm gonna if I do the same thing you won't be able to see. So all you're gonna do is put glue all over the bottom, getting close to those corners and edges and then just glue your bottom on. Again, if it helps you to put this, set it down flat on the edge of your table. That sounds good to me. And this just goes right on, right on the bottom. Just like this. And then I'll just press down from the inside all over to get that glue spread out. There we go. So next we can put our leaf on. If you would like to just glue it on, you can. Something that I did that was kind of fun is I have these action wobbles. My friend Cheryl Becker told me about them quite some time ago. I got these on Amazon, and it's just a little plastic spring with adhesive on both sides. So I'm gonna use that to put my leaf on because it adds a very cute effect. Or if you wanna use a dimensional adhesive, that'd be cool too, just to make it pop off your project. And I'm 
not sure that it really matters for this, which side goes where. So I'll put it just like this. Super cute. Now for your handle, you could do really whatever you want. There's two holes on either side for your handle. The way that I did my original bag is I, I took some black craft wire like this. You can see it's about that thick. I'm not sure what gauge it is exactly, but I, I cut three pieces that are about as long as I want with some extra space to tie it around and wind it back through. And I cut three equal pieces and I braided them. And then when I was done with that, I wrapped some black hemp cord around that. And I just finished it off kind of kind of crazy like this. I just left it like that because I think it looks kind of spooky. And that's what I did there. Next for the faceted candy corn, I've got the pieces here. It's pretty straightforward and simple. As you can see, there's the white piece, the two orange pieces, the yellow piece, and the back. So the other side of the back will be showing through the hole in your project. If you want to keep that in mind, you're probably using double-sided paper. So what we're going to do is just glue these together using the uh, using the tabs here. Pretty easy peasy. So I'm going to start by gluing the orange pieces to the white piece. And it really does, it just creates a, a straight surface, a, a flat plane, even though it is scored and folded. But that way you can see exactly where to glue these tabs. So technically these are kinda, these are flat, these tabs are flat. But once it's all together, it should make itself flat, even if yours are folded. So nothing to worry about. Just glue them together. Next, I'm going to put some glue on these small tabs here. Glue that together. Then next I'll glue these two tabs like this and same on the other side. Next, I'm going to glue the back into place using these two long tabs. 
and these, and then we'll fold the bottom up. And then some glue on these small ones. Fold that over. Same with the other side. Mine seems to not be lined up as perfectly as it could be. Hopefully it's not too noticeable on my finished project. And then we'll just fold this bottom up and glue it into place. So there we go, super cute. Now if you want to add some shredded paper, I got a big package of this at Michael's. Shredded paper, any kind of coordinating paper would look cute in there. And then I also used some glue. I used this glittering glue that I have, but you could just use regular glue. I'm not sure what the difference is. And the way that I did it was I took a Q-tip and I got some glue on the q-tip and I just rubbed it around one color at a time. I think I started with the, the yellow and I picked a similar color, a similar color to the yellow. I have this really pretty holographic gold. So I did that. You know, I shook it off, put it back in here, did the same thing with this orange and then with the white. So I thought that was a cute touch, but you know, you could skip that part or do something else. And then it's fun to fill it up with some little goodies. Next for the Halloween countdown calendar, I've got all my pieces cut out here and I have my PDF menu printed out. It comes in your download. These come in every download from SVG Cuts and it shows all the shapes and gives some extra information. This one is two, two pages. So I've got my door panels. I've got them all cut out here. They're in a pile. 
like this. I've got my face frame cut out here, as well as my front of my project. Then I've got the interior panels, which I cut out of this paper. Got them in a little pile too. Then I've also got one, two, three, four, calendar one, two, three, and four. These are the, like the, um, what would you call it? Kind of like cups when you open the door. Each one of these is behind the number. There's also some little side parts. These are the side parts. There's four of them, the corner, corner finishers. So I've got all of my calendar cups here. I started to pre-fold a lot of them except for one of them, which we'll do together here in just a moment. Then I've also got the sides. There's four sides like this. They each get folded along their sides. We've got the front, I'm sorry, the back, the back and the back panel, which are just two large squares. And then we've got our numbers also, which are right over here. So for now, I've got my little pile of cup pieces and your machine will have cut a number into each part. This one has a three on it. I don't know how well you can see that. I would darken it in for just for this video. I would use a, a white gel pen so you could see it in this video, but then it, it will be visible inside my project. And I would like to give this to someone when I'm done with it, so I'm gonna skip that part. But if you look closely on each one of these, it has a number. So here's eight, here's six. There's a little line underneath the six, so you can tell it's not nine, it's six and so on and so on. Here's number one. So they go one through 13. So I, like I said, I pre-folded each of them just along every score line. I folded, I just folded it over. So go ahead and do that for all 13 cup pieces, just like this. If you would like to stack yours in order one through 13, I'm gonna do mine in order one through 13. So if you're following along, which I'm sure you are since you're watching this, it doesn't matter what order you put them together, but I'm gonna go ahead and stack them in order. So I've got one on top, 13 on the bottom. So here's one and the number will be upright so you know which way is basically upright. And the center shape is the bottom. And I want you to fold each one up like this. And then this number one has a kind of a, a small triangular shape here. So what we wanna do is fold it this way so that we're creating we're creating a cup shape with those tabs on the outside, and then these outer tabs are like this. So I'm gonna glue together piece number one, just like that. And once you do a few of them, you probably won't need to watch me also do it because although they are different shapes, the concept is the same. So the bottom is flat in the middle, the side tabs, are on the outside so that they're not showing in your finished project. Like this. And then these tabs are like this. So there's piece number one, cup number one, we'll call it. And then here's piece number two. So here's the two. I'm gonna fold it this way. And then fold the side tabs in and glue them on the outside, just like piece number one, just like all 13 of them. 
different shapes, same concept, to create similar cups. So once you get the hang of it, I hope you find it to be pretty straightforward. I try to make my projects as easy as possible, kind of somewhat intuitive, especially if you've done a lot of my projects. Like so. So again, number two is facing upright, so this is gonna be going that way. You can always double check later if you need to to see which way it goes. But here's piece number three. Like this. And you want these top, top tabs to be folded over nice and sharply so it creates a nice flat surface. So here's number four. Here's the number four facing, facing upright. Here's number five. You can certainly take your time gluing yours together a little bit more. I am rushing slightly more than I normally would, only because I don't want this video to take too long. And I think you're starting to get the idea, hopefully. And it's not really necessary to keep them in order, because you can always take a peek to find the number inside if you look closely at yours. Hopefully you can see inside there. So here's number six. Here's number seven.
piece number eight. This this part you want hold it that way. Up number Number 10. Cup number 11, getting close. Cup number 12.
And finally, lucky cup number 13. Next, this part is optional, but I went ahead and I took all of my cups and I looked at the number. Here's the six. It's facing upright inside here. It's a little difficult to see, especially in this video. So I saw that. I flipped it over and I wrote it in the same direction on the back. You do not need to do that, but I did that for all of them, especially just for this video so it's easier to see. Here's the five. It's going in this direction upright. I wrote it in the same upright direction on the back. So I went ahead and did that for all 13 of my cups. And then I also took my front, and you do not need to do this either, but I did, especially for this video again. I made each number a little more visible with my white pen that I have that is visible on black paper. So that's that. Next we can take the face frame, and I'm gonna take this front piece, and I'm gonna lay it up here. You can't really see it, but I'm just gonna use that for reference. What you want to do is take your face face frame and make sure that you have it going in the correct direction. It's lined up matching the front. And then we're going to put the front out of the way. And the cat too, Winnie. I'm sorry. I know, I love you, pet. So I'm going to put that up there out of the way just for reference. And I'm going to lay this in the same orientation in front of me. Next I'm going to glue my cups inside this face frame. So I'm going to start with the outer most cups. It's not really that crucial that it is in a certain order, but that's what I'm going to do. And so to do that, I'm going to start with this space right here. And if I look at the front of my project, I can see that this is for number one. So I'm going to find my cup number one here. And if you don't have your number on the back, that's okay. You can see it right in here and it's upright, which is telling you that it is oriented this way and it's gonna go right inside your project just like this. So go ahead and you can take it back out and we're gonna put glue on these tabs. You might wanna do this on top of some scrap paper because you'll be getting glue on your work surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on these tabs and just feed that inside and turn it over and press down from the other side. Next, I'm going to do this space, which is number five. And you want to make sure that your tabs are not sticking out. Kind of push that in a little bit. It should not be sticking out on the edges.
Next I'm gonna do number seven. If you want to get a pencil handy, once we start to fill this in, it might be tricky to get your finger down in there to press down. So if you'd like to grab a, a pencil with an eraser so you can get in there with this, you can. Next I'll do number two. And then number six. And number 10. And then number eight. And again, the order is not really that crucial. I just thought it would be nice to start from the outside. However, there's going to be some overlap no matter what, what you do. There's going to be some overlapping tabs. So I don't think it's, it really matters where the overlap happens. Next, piece number 13.
next piece number 11. Piece number 12. And then piece number three. And then piece number nine. So this takes a little time, but I hope you found it to be pretty straightforward. I tried to make it as simple as possible with as few pieces as possible. Finally, spot number four, cup number four. just like so. Next, we might as well put our interior panels in place. And these are not numbered, but if you keep them upright, it uh, might be somewhat easy to tell where they go. You could start with ones that are obvious. Hmm, let's see. When you take them off of your mat, they are in formation. So you could keep them that way to keep things easier. So you can go ahead and glue those into place. And next, if you would like to take a look at your edges, if you have anywhere where there's a tab sticking out, such as right here, this one's sticking out a little bit, it's gonna throw off your, oops, it's gonna throw off your um, project a little bit. So if you wanna carefully keep it, keep it straight, you don't wanna cut into the face frame, you just want to cut that tab. 
a little bit if you have the same situation. Even if it's just a hair, it's going to help you in the long run. And I've got my interior panels glued in except for one here. So we can set that aside and take the front of our project. So each of these doors you want to carefully fold it along its score line, being careful not to bend, bend your project. If you have a bone folder, it's a, kind of a good time to use it. Make it nice and sharp. But then you really want it to lay flat. So when it's when it's by itself, if it's if it's popping up a little bit, you just you just really want that to be nice and flat so that your doors stay closed in your final project. So go ahead and carefully do that for each door if you want to keep your your front laid flat as you bend it back carefully along the line. Doesn't matter if you used the dashed score lines or the solid score lines. Whatever you need to do to make sure it's a nice clean hinge and that it also is laying perfectly flat when you're done, that's perfect. So go ahead and do that for all 13 doors.
So you can just do a quick check and make sure you've got all of, all of them and that they're pretty much flat. Maybe flip it over and see if anything, you know, for example, that's kind of sticking up a little bit. So the flatter the better. This three for me is sticking up a little bit. So there we go. Now we can go ahead and glue our door panels on. So you just want to match up the numbers to the numbers on the doors and the cutout part that's a guideline will be hidden. So each of those was obvious. And then place the rest of them, which is a bit like a puzzle. Again, if you wanted to keep your pieces when they come off your mat, They do come off of your mat oriented properly, so if you want to keep them that way, it's going to be easier when you do this part. Perhaps I should have said that earlier, but we should be able to figure this out. So now you can go ahead and glue these into place, being extremely careful to glue them very precisely so that they're not overlapping anywhere. You really want them to line up with the opening and the hinge. Now as you can see, all of my doors are, my door panels are glued on to my doors. And next you can take your numbers and put them in place and glue them on. So I apologize for how, how skinny they are. I realize it might be a little tricky to glue them on, but you can really just do a couple little dots of glue like this. Maybe just here and there, dot, dot, dot. And then just center that right in the opening. If you have some glue that's showing through, you can grab a straight pin and clean that up. I don't have mine handy, but I keep a little straight pin handy for paper projects so that if I need to clean up a little small spot of glue, I can. And each number is the same. For example, this two is the same size as that two, so you don't need to worry about which one you're putting where. And you can go ahead and glue your numbers into place. Also, as a side note, the nines and the sixes appear to be identical no matter which way they're oriented. So I could use this as a nine or as a six. They seem to be the same. So that's good. And then as soon as you're done putting your numbers on, if you would like to put something flat and heavy on top of this to make sure that it really dries nice and flat, if you have the time and the desire, that might be a good idea because since there's so much glue inside the layers, it's fine, but if you want to be extra, extra meticulous, you could do that because it appears to be like slightly, slightly wrinkling a little bit. So 
up to you if you have the time. Lay something flat, maybe a stack of 12 by 12 paper, a couple of them on top. If not, it's probably okay too. I did not do that with my first project and it came out okay, came out good. So just a potentially helpful suggestion. Next, you can get this piece back out, and we're just gonna glue this right onto the front. Pretty exciting, making sure that it's flat when it goes on, of course. So if you wanna get your pencil handy with an eraser on it, that's a good idea. So what we're gonna do is just put glue on this whole surface on the top, and then carefully place this on top flip it over and press it down. So you just wanna be as precise as you can throughout this whole part. So I'm just gonna do a nice amount of glue, and by nice I mean about this much, so that when it gets pressed down, it spreads just enough to take hold, but not so much that it's oozing out the sides. And I think that'll be just perfect. So you, you wanna work somewhat quickly so that it's not drying too much before you can put your next piece on. while also being kind of careful and precise. So that should be good. Ooh, fingers crossed, moment of truth. I mean, it works, but uh, it's a little scary. So I'm gonna line up, ooh, I'm gonna line up the corners here and these corners and the sides. You really, really want to line up the edges in the corners so that the rest of it falls into place. So make sure that that's nice, nice and precise. I'm going to go around the edges and then I'm going to flip it over carefully and press down from the inside with my pencil eraser, the eraser end of my pencil. Not too hard, I don't want to leave a mark but firmly enough to, you know, if you can get in there with, with a finger, go ahead. Some of the spaces are a little easier than others. See what you can do and then just carefully, carefully yet quickly press down on all of those little runways in there. Maybe just go over everything a second time. Kind of get close close to the edge on both sides. You want it to be as, as flat and wrinkle-free as possible. No bubbles, no wrinkles. Hopefully no oozing. kinds of eraser yuckies. So there we go. If you see any areas where there's any wrinkling, now's your chance to smooth it out. And there we go. Very nice, very nice and flat. All right. 
Next we can take our four sides. I've already folded three of them. The other one I left to show you how I do it. I like to lay it down on a flat surface. It can be kind of tricky to get it started, especially if you have the textured paper like I do. Sometimes it wants to fold along the texture. And if you have some kind of straight edge or a bone folder, now is a, now is a nice time to use that. So fold all four of your sides just like this. So now all we're going to do is very carefully glue that on the bottom, then on the top, then on the two sides. All four sides are identical so there's no, no way to do it incorrectly as long as you line up the corners very precisely. And we'll just put that right onto the bottom there, lining it up very carefully. I'm going to anchor these two sides, make sure that they're taking hold and then carefully turn it over and press it flat. So go ahead and do the same with the top and then the other two sides. Next, you're going to take your four corners. They're identical. You want to fold them in half. They're the same no matter which way they're oriented. And we're going to carefully glue them onto the corners, making sure that the two corners of your project are lined up very precisely. And you can, you can start by gluing just one part of this onto the one side, just like that, lined up 
very meticulously. So let's do that for all, all four corners. Just anchor it onto one first. And then we'll carefully affix it to the other side, lined up very nicely. You can even kind of squeeze the corners gently to make sure that they are lined up really nicely so that you're extra happy with your project. Everything is nice and, nice and lined up. Alright, getting close guys. Next we're basically just going to glue this back on and if you want to, well, well, we'll do the back panel last and all we're going to do is glue this baby right on. So I want a nice line of glue and again by nice I mean about this thick so that it spreads out but that it uh, doesn't ooze out. And this is probably the trickiest, trickiest part, but you got this. Maybe with just a smidge of random glue on these parts. And this is a perfect square, so it doesn't matter which way it's going. You might want to um, make sure none of these are angled inwards too much, or else they might not take hold. Oops. And then guide it into place so that the edges line up.
Now we can glue this piece on. I think I would like to add a little ink to the edges. A nice little vintage effect with my vintage paper. And if you're not familiar with these ink pads, they are by Colorbox. They're called Cat's Eye Ink Pads. I get them on Amazon. I've seen them at Michael's, but not the biggest selection and not really the single ones. So now you can glue your back panel on and say yay because you are done. Maybe do a double check and make sure <clears throat> that you've got it. Okay, so it's right side up if your paper has a pattern that matters like this. And it's not a bad idea to take a a straight edge, you could even use a pencil. And just smooth that out carefully. Now you can have fun putting some goodies inside if you want. I have some suggestions. You, when you do put your stuff inside, if you would like to open your doors using a little spatula. If you want to be really careful when you're filling it up, you could open your doors. So the door always opens where this little half circle is and you can put something inside and if you kind of press around it, just the tension and the friction of the edges of the paper keeps it closed. But if you want it to be more secure, you could put a little, a little sticker on there if you want, maybe a little spider sticker or something. If you really want it to stay closed, if you're giving it to maybe a younger person who might be, you know, excited and they'll be, you know, running around with it or something, all the doors might come open, especially if there's heavy stuff inside. So if you want to secure it, you could put a cute little sticker or a little black dot sticker or something. And here's an example of a door. This door is going in, so if you want to use a spatula to to open it when you're when you're filling it up you can and if you can avoid bending it back super hard at this point then it's gonna it's gonna lay better of course if you're giving it to a kid you know they're gonna go nuts and remember it forever so even if they kind of mess it up it's part of the fun I think so also when you put your goodies inside if you want to secure them with some adhesive maybe um for example you could use something like this. These are really strong. They're by ThermoWeb. They have them where craft supplies are sold. They use them for dimension. They're dimensional adhesives, but they are also extremely strong. So if you wanted to use those to secure your goodies inside your little spaces, that's an idea. And all kinds of fun stuff fits in there. Here's my original one. I've got a hair bow from Hobby Lobby. What else? I have all kinds of little, little candies. There's a werewolf candy. My husband's been eyeing my candy stash. He wants to know where I'm keeping all these new Halloween candies. I have a, oh, there's a jingle bell. I had a little safety reflector. I've got some bouncy ball eyeballs. So if I was giving this to a child or even an older person, I might, I might secure these some of these with some adhesive, and I might also put like a little spider sticker, you know, just to keep it closed. But or if you're skipping the treats altogether, if you saw my action wobbles, let me get that. Another idea is I have these little action wobbles. These are mini ones and they're adhesive on both sides but they're little plastic springs. You could even skip the candy. Here's what they, the effects that these have. Ooh, this one's kinda, it's just a little springy thing. Um, you could even skip the candy and cut out little, little ghosts and eyeballs and stuff and put those inside on little springs. And it could just be fun to open and see little surprises every day too. So just some ideas. I hope you have an awesome time making it. 
I definitely want to see if you do, and I hope whoever you give it to is completely enchanted. I'm sure they will be. Next for the Haunted House box card, I've got all the pieces here laid out with the envelope kind of off camera over here. So normally with my box cards in your PDF document, which comes in your download, I printed this out. You can look at it on your computer or you can print it out if you'd like. It's a letter size document, so if you wanted to print it, you could. That's optional, but usually for my box cards, I have a diagram here that shows where the pieces get glued together. For this one, it's kind of a little different, so I'm just gonna go with the video to show you in the video here. It does show you how to put the envelope together, but we'll also be doing that. So I've got this label back here, which I can go ahead and stamp on, that goes on the back of the card. As you can see in my finished card, I used the same stamp, and this part is kind of loose, but when it sits when it sits on a surface, it holds it up straight. So that's what it looks like, although you've seen it in the video. So. I will go ahead and stamp on there. And this stamp is from Michaels. I just got it a couple weeks ago. I really like the captions. I don't really get a chance to use these cool designs. I'm not much of a stamper. If I had more time for other kinds of crafts, I probably would. But anyway, I thought this was really nice um, for just a nice caption. It's from Recollections and it fits nicely right in my space here. So there we go. I am also going to go ahead and take one of these ink pads. These are Cat's Eye ink pads by Colorbox. I like to use them to rub on the edges of shapes. It's a technique that I learned at a scrapbook store called Archivers over 10 years ago and I'm a big fan. I pretty much do it for every every shape, especially patterned papers. It kind of finishes off the look. So I've got my back panel here. On my original card, I cut the back panel out of black paper. But for this one, I decided to do something a little different and cut it out of some patterned paper. You could definitely do it either way. It's going to be cool. So there's that. Then, these three large pieces make up the card itself and then the remaining pieces are panels so for these if you wanted to emboss these two or some of these roof panels you could although some of them are folded such as this one this one is not and this one is so if you wanted to emboss this with some texture and this that'd be a cool idea in this one and then what I'm going to do is use a light colored ink pad to give it that distressed look. That's what I did on my original card. You can see the edges are kind of like lighter colored and look kind of spooky. So the way that I did that was using a combination of these two. You could use either or. I found that this ink pad that I have, it's like a light tan, it's called Dune. It seems to be drying out, so I also kind of supplemented it with this white one that I have which is extremely inky. So the way that I did it was I just kinda, I barely rubbed it real messy like this. And then I blended it in with my dune. So when this one was brand, when this was brand new, I was able to just use it by itself for this, a similar effect. So it's really up to you. You can't mess it up, even if you, accidentally get some ink like right in the middle or something it's a haunted house so you, there aren't really any rules actually it looks even cooler that way so for a really nice effect you can do that to all of your your panels before you glue them on and then I'll kind of do that as I go with with the other shapes also Oh. 
the messier the better and it's just a nice little nice touch so we'll do some more of that in just a moment but in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and fold along the score lines Just like this. This one's very straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece right here. Even if you glue it on kind of crooked, that's a nice touch, honestly. So don't worry too much about being perfect with your haunted house. Go ahead and glue my back panel on. Next, I'm going to take this shape and glue that right on the inside. And then I'll take one of these, one of these three small rectangles. Crooked is cute. Next, I'm going to take this flat piece and glue it onto this one here. And then I'm going to glue it right onto this shape. like that. Next I'm going to go ahead and just throw a little bit of ink on these shutters. This is getting a little a little ridiculous, but I'm going to do this one too. Okay. Next, I'm just going to throw a little bit of ink on this one here, just here and there. one. Next I'm going to set, set these aside and fold this piece like that like this, one more here, and like that. 
Now I've laid it flat again. <clears throat> I'm gonna fold it or flip it over and take this piece, put some glue on its tab, which has the rounded corners and glue that right onto the front here. Just like that. Could throw some ink on here also. And glue these little two shutters on the side. There's really not a right or wrong place to glue the shutters, but here's how I did mine. Then I'm going to fold it under like this. I'm going to crease it a little more sharply, which is optional. And same with this piece, like that. I'm just going to throw some more ink on here. door looks very ghostly and then if this piece is not too small for you you can go ahead and put some glue on the ends and glue that across the front door like this and then some glue on this tab here and glue that closed like so so here's our little front front part So now while this is still flat, I'm going to go ahead and glue this right onto the front just like this. So as you can see the bottom, this bottom fold line is going to be flush with the bottom. You want it to be centered more or less right on the front there. Now we can glue the two sides together like this. There's our card, super cool, it even makes a cool shadow. And then you can go ahead and glue your shutters around this window here and this window here.
Next for the envelope, it comes off of your mat like this. Like this. And you can turn it this way. Fold it. This is the top. You don't have to use a bone folder, but this is one of those situations where it's kind of helpful. This is the bottom. So all you're going to do is put some glue down here, fold her up, and make sure that you're not gluing it completely closed by accident. If there's glue oozing out on the inside, you might be gluing it closed. And then to put your card inside, you can carefully fold it flat, like so. There's probably more than one way to do that, but as long as it's in this formation, it's going to fit inside just like that. So then you can carefully slide it in. If you meet any resistance, just be careful. Just like that. And you can glue that closed. Finally, for the spider box, I've got the pieces laid out here. Panels one, there are these three pieces. We've got panels two, the box front, and the box itself, as well as the three creepy spiders. So the box front, you can fold here. And you don't need to, but if you have a bone folder, sometimes it's nice to get a nice crease. And I'll do the same with all of these fold lines on the box shape. This is extremely straightforward. You probably don't even need to watch this part of the video. But just in case. Sometimes the, bo the bone folder can be a little too much. Like as you can see, these this paper is creased pretty hard. It's kind of a personal preference. Sometimes it helps your project go together more precisely when you use the bone folder to crease. But sometimes it's a little much. So if it's ever absolutely necessary or highly recommended, I will let you know. But for this, optional. So we could go ahead and put it together, but something that I like to do is I have these ink pads by Colorbox. They're called Cat's Eye Ink Pads. This one is sapia black, which is kind of a brownish black. So it's kind of like a rustic kind of vintage, dark, dark brown. I think it adds a nice touch to a lot of projects, especially when you're using vintage paper. Or even when you're not, I like to say it kind of finishes off the edges of patterned paper panels, such as this. Kind of creates a vignette look where it's darker at the edges. So I'm going to take a few extra moments to add that to these pieces. The only thing is sometimes the little um, foam pad kind of uh, comes off when you do that. So on your work surface you might get little pieces of <clears throat> inky, inky foam. So if you want to do that on top of something that you don't care about too much, that might be a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and 
I'm going to lay this out like this. This is how the box is going to go together. The front, the back, the sides, the top. And these are going to be going like this. This could go like this, but since the lid is going to be folded towards me, I'm actually going to flip it over and put it that way. And this will be going here. And then these go on either side of it, so here and here. So that's how it's going to be laid out. I'm going to glue those panels on and then put the box together and then put my spiders on. So I really like this project because it's nice and straightforward and it uses your cutting machine's capability to create the, the cool design, you know, something you couldn't really do very easily by hand. But it's also easy to put together and you can use a few different of your favorite patterned papers also. So three, three good things about it. Next, I'm going to glue the front on like so. I didn't really center this panel very well, but that's okay. So it might seem strange. It seems like there are two bottoms of this project, but I did that so that when you look at it from the inside, you're not gonna see the tabs and there's fewer pieces, sort of. So it's gonna go like this. So to secure the bottom in place, I will put some glue on the inside of these side tabs and fold them over. Put some glue on the bottom and press down from the inside like so. So there we go, super cute. Now you can put whatever goodies you want inside and close it up. Someone could even use it for decor or to store some doodads in with their decor. And then you can just put these little guys wherever you would like. If you wanna bend the legs a little bit, you could.
or an adhesive, an adhesive foam circle would be nice underneath it to give it some dimension, make it pop off of the project a little bit. Just like that. So there you have it, new projects for Halloween. I hope you love them. I hope you have a great time making them. If you do, I would love to see a picture on your blog, pin that on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, however you like to share. I always love to see, and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting.